Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So today I was gonna do the tower strut bar install video, but unfortunately it didn't get here in time. So it's probably for the best because man, is this car dirty. It's been a couple weeks since I've done a maintenance wash on it. So it's certainly time. So I'm gonna show you a few of the products that I use in order to maintain the BMW. And uh, it's not a review or anything. It's just, I've used a bunch of different products with a bunch of different vehicles over the years. And these are just the ones for the coating that I've got on this car that I feel like really work best. So I'll show you some of those things. I'll show you a product that I use to clean uh, my Plasti Dip wheels, uh, which is the best product I've found to clean wheels right now uh, on the market. So I'll show you that. And then afterwards, I thought we'd go through some of the exterior things that I've done to the car. Some of them are, are, most of them actually are little small things that you wouldn't notice maybe unless I pointed them out. So I haven't shown really any of that on the channel so far. So I thought we'd go through that. Um, and then I'll give you some final shots of what the car looks like all cleaned up. My goodness, y'all. I'm almost embarrassed to show you the car today. It's been a couple weeks since, uh, since I've had an opportunity to wash it, but I guess uh, that's what happens when you're busy and business gets in the way. But today we're going to fix that up and see if we can get some of these bugs off the front and and uh, see about getting it tightened up. But uh, one thing I wanted to tell you, you know, that's we talk a lot about performance and we talk a lot about um, you know aesthetic things that you can do to the car and and all that fun stuff but you know we haven't talked a lot about uh, you know how to maintain really the finish of the car and first thing I did when I got this car because I live in Florida and we, there's a lot of bugs in Florida you know and so with a bunch of driving uh, that takes place I end up getting a lot of bugs down here on the front and uh, so I have to sort of keep that in check because they will eat your paint they will uh, etch uh, into your clear coat so first thing I did when I got the car is I took it and uh, had it paint corrected you know found a good reputable place in town and had it paint corrected and uh, then I went with the fine lab heel light and uh, you can do the heel plus I did the heel light uh, because that's got a five-year warranty on it I don't think I'll have this car for five years maybe um, but if if I do and I feel like uh, reapplying it I can but one thing that I really tried to do is just really maintain the maintenance after the application of uh, ceramic coating because a lot of folks think that you just put ceramic coating on one time and then from that point on you're good, you're not gonna get scratches and that's just not the case. It just makes it easier to maintain. Um, certainly makes it easier to wash and, uh, and, and it does make it a little bit more difficult to scratch. And with the heel light, especially in Florida with the heat, um, little fine scratches that may get on the car um, any once it heats up those little fine scratches will go away and the heel plus is even better with that so uh, one other thing that I did is I did the whole front clip and I went with Lumar uh, paint protection film and at one point I had expel on there and I actually had the expel taken off and I put the Lumar on and I, I just am more happy with the Lumar the expel uh, didn't seem like it and it could have been the insulation but it didn't seem like it attached very well I had one time when I washed it where with the um, pressure washer that it put a little hole in it and but the biggest thing is it wasn't as clear to me and so I'm sure that there's folks that have expel on their car and it's been fine so I'm not trying to really say go with one or the other I'm just giving you my uh, my experience the Lumar to me uh, seems to be more hydrophobic and it's really really rock resistant i mean i drive up and down the turnpike i drive up and down i4 um, where there's just tons and tons of construction you'll see after uh, we wash the car today that um, really it'll come all the way back to to where you really can't tell that there's even a film on there and that there's any real damage anywhere on the car and if you were to get close you'll see a few little things here and there but but really not uh, not bad so I would highly recommend that if you're going to keep your car nice and you want it to be, um, you know, really clean and easy to clean, then some sort of ceramic coating is the way to go. There's a lot of different companies and brands out there, but um, that's what I did with the car. So um, I'm going to show you some of the products that I use. I'm going to get the car washed and then I'm going to show you a few of the other things uh, that I've sort of done to the car. Um, since I've had it that I uh, haven't really shared yet. So uh, stick with me and uh, let's get after it. 
All right, so here are a few things that I use when I'm going to wash the car. You know, I'm uh, by, by no means a professional or a detailer or anything like that, but certainly have done plenty of research on figuring out the best way, at least for me, to handle my car. So I thought I'd share a couple of those things, um, you know, here today. So I had to use the three-bucket method, and for those of you that don't know what the three-bucket method is, it's basically two buckets. One is for your clean uh, microfiber mitts and one is for your dirty microfiber mitts and what you do is you use one that you uh, dip to get your clean uh, soap on shampoo if you will and uh, and then when you get done washing that panel you rinse it off in the uh, dirty bucket and uh, and get all of the dirt that's in the mitt out and then you can go back to the clean bucket and then the third bucket is meant for things all the extra uh, tools and things that you use for wheel cleaning and logo cleaning. Maybe you're cleaning your engine bay, but the whole the whole goal is basically to just not um, take dirt and sand um, and, and other contaminants and put it back on the car to try to keep scratching down. So on my vehicle, as I indicated earlier, I've got uh, I have Fine Lab ceramic coating uh, on the car, and then I also have uh, the entire front clip in uh, in PPF. So I do a bit of driving, uh, a lot of driving on highway, so it helps keep down from the rock chips. But I really think that the key to having a really nice, um, clean looking car um, and also having a car that is easy to clean uh, when it gets dirty is really the, the, the ceramic coating. So um, one thing that I noticed as I went through uh, and figured out sort of how to maintain ceramic coating, there are a lot of folks out there again. That, uh, that have all different uh, types of products and ways, but what I found the most is um, I actually use the Fine Lab uh, Pure Wash Concentrate, and it's this. It is the shampoo that is made for the ceramic coating. And what I like about it is that there's no additives, there's no extra anything in it. So when you use this shampoo in your car, it really just strips it right back to the ceramic coating. I have a couple times tried to use a few different shampoos for the car that may have um, you know some wax and those things in it and what I find is when I wash the car with those those extra additives sort of stick uh, and then the car gets dirtier faster so I've learned now to just really use a really stripped down no additive shampoo uh, for the car so again I use the fine lab pure wash uh, in addition certainly when my car is extra dirty and most every time I use a foam cannon, uh, and that just tries to loosen up those um, some of those contaminants and dirt and whatnot on the car. So I'll spray the car down, use the foam cannon. But I use um, something called Auto Glam Polar Blast, and I find that to be the best uh, shampoo that I've used in the guns. It foams really well; it sticks to the car. So if you're someone that uses a foam cannon, that's what I use. And then um, after I wash the car. Uh, I actually use two different detailers, and it really depends upon what I'm doing. Um, but one, I'm, I'm, I'm actually got a mix today because I'm out of it, but I make my own detailer. This company called uh, Wolfgang, um, it is it is a, uh, a, a rinseless car wash. And I never do rinseless car washing, but what I've found is that this uh, makes an, a phenomenal um, detailer. So if you just keep your car garage kept or you know you don't drive it much and go out and get a little dust on it or even if you come back and it's a bird decided to leave you a surprise or you get some something on your car and you just want to hit it really quick but not not have to do a whole car wash um, you know good a good detailer is a way to go so what I use uh, instead of going out and buying a detailer right off the shelf because um, those typically have um, you know scents or you find a lot has you know like the spray wax or it's some sort of um, uh, contaminated really detailer if you will uh, not in a good sense but I like to use my own so this does kind of the same thing when I use this Wolfgang uh, uber rinseless wash and I turn it into a detailer which I'll show you how to do that essentially what I get is the same thing that I get from the uh, fine lab pure wash which is it takes it all the way down to uh, the ceramic coating and it doesn't leave um, additives on the paint and I think that I get uh, a, a cleaner car like that and it's certainly easier to to maintain so uh, how I do this is essentially start with distilled water and so I'll make a gallon at a time 
And what I'll do is I'll just take it and pour a little out just so that I've got a little extra uh, there. And uh, you'll have to excuse me, it's a little windy out, so a couple of these uh, things are wanting to blow away here. But it's got this little measuring uh, deal here. And what I'll do is I use two ounces per gallon. So typically speaking, you would use an ounce, one ounce per um, per car wash. And since we're not doing that, I'm just going to use two ounces as a detailer. So I'll put one ounce in and then I'll squeeze up one more ounce. And you just use two ounces per gallon of distilled water. And I'll tell you, if you're into uh, detailers that smell good, this one does smell pretty good. It smells kind of like bubble gum, but what that'll do is that'll give you a gallon at a time. It's a whole lot cheaper than buying detailer off the shelf. You just give it a good quick mix and you are ready to go with detail. And then I just use one of these little Zep sprayers. And uh, once you mix it up good, you'll just fill the, fill the uh, Zep sprayer and then you're good to go with your detailer. And it works really well. It'll get any of that dirt off and it leaves your surface extremely, extremely clean. Uh, like I said, without leaving any contaminants on there. I really, again, would just stress that extra contaminants that are what I call contaminants or additives um, that stay on your car when you wash it or anything that's in a detailer or spray wax, it just attracts more dirt uh, to want to stick to your car. So I like getting it again all the way down to the, uh, to the, to the ceramic coat um, without leaving anything extra on there. So really, that's all I do for a detailer. And this stuff is awesome. So if you want to try a good detailer that's cheap and works, that's, uh, that's another really good one to do. And then the other one that I do, and I do this about once every three months, is the Fine Lab Detailer. And it's a maintenance, um, it's a maintenance detailer if you already have the Fine Lab ceramic coat on there. So this is, um, you know, a lot of times you'll see the review on the Fine Lab Detailer and you'll, you'll see that, that folks will say, well, it's not easy to work with, it's hazy, it's not... Uh, sort of user friendly and the reason is is because it's not a normal detailer in the sense of a detailer a detailer is where you spray on get dust off you know um, for bird left you something makes it really easy to get those contaminants off the fine lab detailer though can be used like that is really meant more as a as a ceramic maintenance so um, a very very little bit goes a very very long way so most folks use more than you really need and you just use a microfiber towel um, and missed, missed the vehicle. And then, like I said, a little goes a long way. You let it haze for a second. Um, and then you take a clean microfiber towel and you just buff it to clean. And it works amazingly well. And, and really, every time I do this, it's like the car is uh, brand new. So, uh, from the original ceramic coating. And then, uh, not much uh, that I do really on the interior. I keep the interior pretty clean and dusted, but I do use the Chemical Guys Total in, uh, Interior Cleaner and Protectant. Seems to work really, really well. Just put it on a microfiber towel and, uh, and it tends to clean up really well. But the one thing I wanted to show you, I'm actually really excited because I got a new one in today. I love using this stuff. Is um, I have, uh, I have dip wheels. So my wheels are normally uh, silver and uh, from the factory. And so I uh, got my stuff from dipyourcar.com, which I really love uh, Fonzie down there uh, at that site. But I'll tell you what, if you've got a dipped car um, and you, or if you've got dipped rims, uh, there is literally nothing better to clean a set of dipped rims. If you have dipped rims, you know how frustrating it can be. So this BDP that they sell down, and again, you can get this from Fonzie down at dipyourcar.com, but this brake dust professional touchless brake dust uh, releaser is amazing. And there are, there are a couple different companies that are out there that uh, make something similar, but I've used uh, most all of them. And this is one of those where when you use it, it's gonna turn uh, it'll turn sort of sort of purplish, but this is um, it's got a pretty strong odor to it. This is absolutely the first product that unless you've just literally been a year and you haven't cleaned your brakes, but if you wash your car like I do, which is I try to hit it every week or two, 
This is a product to where I barely have to touch my tires or rims. This you can literally spray on and rinse off and most of the time one solid application and everything that's on your rims and tires will be gone. Um, so if you have some extra hard soil or you've been to the track or something like that and it's sort of baked on a little bit, um, you may find yourself spraying it twice. Uh, and then of course you can use a brush or whatever. Um, tire brush in order to agitate if you need to but I got to tell you if you have dip rims um, and and really any rim but if you have dip rims and you want to get uh, all of the brake dust off of everything in your tire super simple this is the product to go with and I want to say this product's like $19.99 and it gets me gets me probably I don't know probably six eight washes uh, so really really good product there so these are sort of the products that I use when uh, I'm going to clean up the uh, BMW and um, you know it's really simple really simple stuff to do the other thing I would say is in Florida we have a lot of bugs so before I wash typically I'll take a little bit bit of the detailer especially since it's so cheap and I'll just soak down the front and I'll soak down the front sides of my mirrors and if those bugs are on there it'll uh, it'll soften them up and I've got the PPF again on the front and on the mirrors so I'm not really worried about any chemicals that I put on that uh, for the most part so I spray it, it'll sort of loosen that up and then by the time I get done with the high pressure washer uh, foam cannon and then do my three bucket wash I'm good to go uh, all right so I use actually three mitts um, I use this bigger one here and I only use it for the rocker panels um, and the back lower half of the bumper in the rear and maybe about 10, in 10 inches up or so on the door. And the reason that I do that is because that's where a lot and most of the contaminants are going to be. So instead of using this mitt uh, and then transferring it up to the top of the, of the vehicle, um, would not make sense because I would have a risk of moving contaminants up that could scratch a car. And then I use uh, the next mitt that I use only for the front of the car. So um, this is used on the PPF that uh, right on the front of the bumper where all the bugs are and anything that I wasn't able to get off uh, with the pressure sprayer, uh, pressure washer before uh, starting uh, the process. And then, uh, and then this uh, third and final mitt uh, microfiber mitt is what i use to do basically the top of the car right so top windshield top of the hood uh, top of the trunk and then the top sides of the vehicle so that way i really uh, minimize the risk of getting any large contaminants on the paint as much as possible to try to keep as much uh, of the scratching and swirling that you'll see uh, down as much as humanly possible all right, I wanted to stop right here and just show you. So I've got some gifts that some birds left me right here. And this is on my PPF and there's a ceramic coating on this as well. But I got to show you, I'm going to just grab the pressure washer here and you're going to see that um, literally I'm just going to barely hit this and it's going to immediately come off. It, it hasn't hooked into the car at all. So check this out, it's pretty cool. gone so as you can see it is really 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 hydrophobic nothing will stick to it and uh, pretty much any of that that I had on the car as soon as you hit it um, and I'm not even running a, a you know any kind of amazing pressure or anything like that it just it just comes right off and I haven't even touched this car with a mitt yet this is literally just um, you know going through and just wetting it down um, so I can hit it with a foam cannon and then so that I can come and hit it with a mitt so you can see that right off the bat, if you've got ceramic coating and you've got PPF film, this cleaning your car is super, super, super easy. Um, so I would highly recommend getting the PPF on the front um, and, and certainly a ceramic coating. All right, so again, best product I've found. These are Plasti Dipped uh, Black. And so, you know, you can't tell a lot of the brake dust just because they are black rims, but basically what happens is, is they go from like a nice satin sheen to dull with the brake dust. So the absolute best thing that I found is the BDP, Brake Dust Professional. And again, I get this um, from dipyourcar.com. But essentially, you just get a nice spray going. Just got this in. And you just hit the whole wheel. Make sure that you get all the nooks and crannies. And again, it is a pretty loud product from a scent standpoint. So just know that starting off. But you'll see it immediately turn purple in here. And this is taking all the 
metal and uh, brake dust and just dislodging it and then you'll just rinse it. And after about two minutes you just get in here and just rinse it off really well with like a high pressure spray. As you can see and of course you'll see once we dry the tire off but it gets everything off and takes it all the way back there's literally nothing in there no brake dust left anywhere not even in the corner so best stuff I've found so far would highly recommend it So there she is, got her all cleaned up and uh, didn't even, there's no detailing spray or anything on here. This is literally just a wash and dry and a little tire shine. So again, you know, one thing I really like about, um, you know, the products that I'm using right now again is like the Fine Lab shampoo for the car really keeps the car um you know very clean it's still smooth to the touch but it just doesn't have uh, all of the extra additives that a lot of the other shampoos have so but you know like i said i was going to point out a couple things i had done to the car you know being an m sport i was really lucky because the trim here the window trim uh, was already black so i didn't have to black that out in order to take the car to black so that was one positive uh, right off the bat but there are a lot of things that were chrome on this car um, the little side trim pieces here were chrome and I actually at one point uh, black vinyl wrapped those to match the car and then um, I went back and made the decision to go ahead and plasti dip those I found that it was really really easy to plasti dip those um, these little strips right here on the handle were chrome. They come chrome on the car, and I did do the black vinyl there, so you can see uh, the close-up of the black vinyl, and you cannot tell um, that it's not paint, really. And I did that on all of the uh, four doors. Uh, I came, see, what else did I do? Well, obviously, I told you I plastic dipped the rims. Um, these are black. These have been on here. Man, these things have been plastic dipped for probably six, eight months. No issues, no chipping know any of that I did the red calipers uh, with uh, just red caliper paint um, so just try to do some tasteful little things the you know with the intake that I did on this car went ahead and did the red tips there sort of to match the emblems uh, instead of being blue uh, and white uh, I did black and white and you can actually get these emblems just the emblems but I actually found it actually almost easier rather than having to try to go take these off I did um, you can buy just the black vinyl uh, and so I did black vinyl on those uh, on the front the back and I also did the black vinyl on the center caps on the wheels so all of the emblems uh, are black and white uh, the only one thing I would say about that is that over time, sometimes that vinyl will shrink a little bit, but you can't tell it. Um, 
right here on the side mirror. This is a white plastic, like clear plastic. And so what I did is I used exterior tent because this is where the flasher is. So I didn't want to black that out where the flasher didn't work. So I just used um, a dark external tent. It goes on really, really nice. Um, really just sort of darks it out, but when the blinker's on, it, it shines straight through without a problem. So that's pretty good. And then I also did, some folks take these black, or uh, I should say some, some folks black out these reflectors here and yeah, I've thought about it. Uh, but what I actually did was I just used the same uh, tent that I did on the side mirrors and tinted those, um, just those reflectors. It's probably hard to tell um, in the camera, but um, I can, uh, they are quite a bit darker, especially when you get back in the vehicle, you can tell that they, that they darken out. Um, and then I also plastic dipped, I put the JB4 logo on here, you can probably see it uh, right there. And those come silver and so does the 550i emblem. And I plastic dipped those. It is so super simple and easy to do that if you haven't done it. Maybe I'll do a, a little quick video on how to do that because I think if everyone knew how easy it was to uh, plastic dip uh, emblems and things like that on the vehicle, uh, folks would do it. Other than that, it's just been about how black can I get the vehicle. Um, you know, one thing I don't do, I'm not going to black out the tail lights. I'm not going to put tin on the front headlights. I, I need to be able to see them driving. So I don't go the, the, that crazy to do those types of things. Um, I did do the little M. Um, tire stem caps and then some one thing that you can't really see maybe I'll get in the garage and see if I can get it but I do have where uh, when you open the door it has the M emblem on the ground and uh, doesn't you can't really see it during the day but at night time it's really clean uh, and I don't mind it being on this car because this is an M sport so I've got little M features on the vehicle that come stock uh, OEM on the rims and in the vehicle so just little touches like that are pretty cool but man this thing is clean very very clean you can see that it really really cleans up nice and that is a hundred percent because of the uh, because of the ceramic coat so again there is ceramic coat um, fine lab heel light on this entire car and then there is um, PPF paint protection film on the front mirrors, uh, the two side front fenders, the hood, and the bumper. And I would tell you that there's no way that I would ever run a vehicle uh, that I'm daily driving without paint protection film, especially on a black vehicle. Um, there's a couple little nicks in there, but really it stays super, super clean. Uh, it's very easy to clean. So if you want to uh, make your life a little easier and you don't already have ceramic coat uh, on your vehicle, then it's something that I would recommend. I haven't used the uh, ceramic coatings that are uh, available to the public. I've only used the ones that have to be installed by professionals, so I don't know how good a job those do. Uh, maybe comment down in the uh, comments if you've uh, found that um, you've got some aftermarket um, ceramic coats that are available to the public that work well i'm sure folks would like to know but so that's what i've done to the car so far coming up uh front tower strut bar um, i am going to finally start working on the outside a little bit more uh, i've got i'm going to do the front carbon fiber lip that'll be the first carbon fiber piece that i've put on the car um, I really like to keep it black, but I know that if I put a black lip down there, it's going to get really, really ate up by the road. So uh, I'm going to go with a carbon fiber lip down at the bottom. So we'll have a video coming on that. Um, oh, one thing I forgot. I did put the little OEM style lip on, on the back trunk and I really like it. Um, it keeps it sort of clean and stealth, but and not too, too aggressive. So I'll probably keep that for now but I'm also going to do the rear diffuser in carbon fiber. And on the car, I don't know if you can see in the video with the lighting, but that whole bottom splitter that's there that isn't really a splitter, it's just the bottom part of the bumper is already gray. So I'm gonna make that match with the front lip. So we'll do carbon fiber splitter on the back, carbon fiber front lip on the front. 
And then probably after I do those, I'll see maybe, maybe I'll change um, the little trunk lip out to maybe something a little bit more aggressive. But I'm really having a hard time with whether or not I would keep that black or if I would go with carbon fiber. Honestly, I'd probably keep it black because I don't I think carbon fiber is getting a little out of hand on some vehicles these days. And I really like the fact that the car is black. But at the same time, the things that are really low, I think the carbon fiber would look good and keep it sort of tasteful on the vehicle. Uh, also going to be doing some lowering springs. This car is not lowered. And uh, so I've got some, a, a new, I should say newer um, adjustable spring that's out and uh, that is made to work with the, um, with the adjustable, or I should say the, um, the electronic uh, shocks that come on the car factory. So the springs are made to, to work with those. So um, we'll dive into that a little bit when that happens. And then really soon, gonna have to get some tires. These are just the tires that came on the car. These are still the run flats. And I would tell you that traction with these, with any kind of real horsepower, is uh, is terrible. Uh, so probably looking at either the Toyo, what is it, the R888Rs, or maybe the Nitto 555s. Um, I think probably the Nitto 555s, because they're gonna be a little bit better in the rain, which is what I want. But, you know, these tires look pretty good. Um, with the width so i'll probably stay with that but i am probably going to bump up to i think on the back what are these 275 35s i'm probably going to go to a 275 40 just to have a little bit more um a, a little bit more tire in the well even though i'm going to lower it and then i'm probably going to go with the 245 um 45 on the front which will give me just a little bit thicker tire a little bit more of a race look and not so much of a of a huge rim look It'll probably make the car ride, car ride a little better, but it will definitely get me a lot more traction. So I think that'll be really cool. So lots of things to come with the car. Um, you know, if you uh, like the channel, think about subscribing. Hit that notification bell at the bottom so that you're notified when my videos come out. But until next time, y'all have a great week and keep modding.